Happy Labor Day. It's 58 degrees. Clear skies out there right now, but we're warming quickly. Sunshine through the lunch hour and the afternoon ball game at Comerica Park looking good. Low in middle 80s, a little breezy and again, lots of sun. So grab the sunscreen between 5 and 10 p.m. Gentlemen, strong to severe storms possible. So we're pushing up barbecue plans. All right, you are looking at I-75 at nine mile, left lane blocked uh, both ways, north and south, as uh, the police try to figure out what's going on there and reopen the commute. There's another look at uh, what we think involves a tanker truck. An accident there. We'll let you know when that clears. It is 525, everybody. Let's turn to good health now as a new school year has started for many college students, and most are already feeling stressed out. New research shows spending time with a four legged friend could actually help. Experts found a 20 minute session significantly reduced stress in students. The students also felt less homesick and a stronger sense of belonging among their peers. Experts also say canine therapy on campuses could decrease dropout rates. I think college students have it figured out in terms of how to reduce stress, don't you? Uh, yeah, beer barn. <laughs> wow. Another way to improve students' physical and mental well-being is by participating in athletics. Experts say athletics can help kids build positive connections and encourage healthy risk-taking. That's what you meant. Of it's, course. Yes, and if your child doesn't make the team, let them know that uh, you have, they have your support. That's when they need your support the most. For the record, I have never in my life done a keg stand. Maybe. I don't uh, know what that is. Brandon? We'll get back to him. Question for you, what do credit cards, cash, and a nice smile have in common? Depending well, on where you live, they can all be used to buy your lunch. I was gonna say, if my son has a nice smile, it usually means he wants my credit card or cash. There you go. But new today, we're gonna tell you the fast food restaurant that's debuting facial payment options. But first, let's check in with Kim DiGiulio with information on this local effort to help animals down in Houston. Kim? That's right, guys. After the storms in Houston, so many pets left without homes. I'll let you know what the Michigan Humane Society is doing to help. The live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 5.30 starts now. One woman is dead and dozens more without a home this morning after a massive fire tears through a Westland apartment complex. And the Michigan Humane Society packing their bags, heading to Texas, giving animals and rescuers a much needed helping hand. And whether you're looking to grill on the porch or head downtown for the Labor Day Parade, Brandon is going to have your full updated forecast. We should get most of the day in. He'll have the rest of the stormy details coming up. Good morning. I'm Jason Carr and for Rhonda Walker. And I'm Everett Cassidy. Of course, Labor Day. A lot of people can be grilling out today. Let's turn things right on over to meteorologist Brandon Rue to find out when those storms might be rolling in. Well, the one thing we want you to know is that most of today is going to be really, really nice and warm. It's sort of the unofficial end of summer, Labor Day weekend and Labor Day. Kids are back to school tomorrow, but your evening barbecue plans a little risky. So we're advertising or advising maybe to move those up a little bit. Five, six o'clock, things are going to start to get a little rocky around here. 58 degrees right now in our metro zone at Metro Airport, 61 in Howell, 61 Lapeer. Good morning in Monroe. In our south zone, you have 61 there. On this Labor Day, also the last day of Arts, Beats, and Eats. And again, get out there and enjoy a great day. Upper 70s to near 80 by noon. Plenty of sunshine. 85 the afternoon high. But by 4 p.m., storms near nearby to our north and northwest and between 5 and 10 p.m. Those showers and storms will be rumbling through some of them on the stronger side with the potential for damaging wind, hail, lots of lightning as well. But again, things are clear now. We can see some of the showers to our north. We'll time it hour by hour for you. Coming up, we'll talk about the severe risks as well. That's ahead uh, in Maine weather. But what are we doing on the roads this morning, gentlemen? Well, on 275 southbound, we have an accident. The ramp closed to northbound 75. The detour exit at Telegraph, take that to Newport Road and then back to northbound 75. The 75 semi-accident at Nine Mile has, uh, look at that, has lanes blocked on both sides of the expressway there. So we'll keep you up to date as we get details. 
In Westland, an apartment complex erupts in flames, killing a 68-year-old resident who used a wheelchair. Now, other residents say management at the Willow Creek Apartments has ignored several requests to make the complex accessible. The victim is named Verlene Johnson, and she was also blind. Neighbors were hoping that someone would get her out in time. We did get a chance to catch up with one of Johnson's neighbors, who's also in a wheelchair, and was saved by his sister-in-law. So I, I opened the door, and uh, I, I couldn't even see. It was, it was just so black. I would have never made it out, and not somebody helped me out. Now, we did reach out to the management of this apartment complex about the residents' concerns, but they refused to comment. A 17-year-old may face charges in connection with the shooting death of his stepfather. Detroit police say the teen shot and killed his stepfather Saturday on the city's west side. The gunfire came during an argument over money at a home on Ward Avenue near McNiggles and the Lodge. The teen took off but was found and was taken into custody early Sunday. A lawsuit has been filed against Michigan State University after it denied a request to rent space for white nationalist Richard Spencer to come and speak on the campus. A member of the white nationalist group organizing Spencer's speaking engagement sued on Sunday, alleging the university is violating Spencer's free speech. The suit asked for Spencer's event to be reinstated with the fee for additional police protection waived, as well as attorney fees and damages in excess of $75,000. As thousands of rescue operations continue in Texas this morning, one often overlooked issue is the rescuers themselves. Yeah, the first responders and employees at shelters and clinics, they're tired as well, as you can imagine. So to give a hand to the rescuers and employees at animal shelters, the Michigan Humane Society is stepping up to the plate. Let's turn things over to Local 4's Kim DiGiulio, who joins us live this morning. Uh, what are they doing to help Kim? Well, they're going to send efforts today. So as you talked about the storm leaving so many people, families without a place to go, without a home. Well, pets are in that same situation now, either stranded at homes or have no place to go. So that's why the Michigan Humane Society is sending help today to help with any need possible. These days in Houston, animal shelters are overflowing with dogs and cats. I got you something. Animal control officer Nadine Perez is staying here around the clock to care for frightened pets. This shelter, normally able to care for up to 30 dogs and 60 cats, now has 100 dogs and 100 cats. It's very high stress right now. Um, emotions are high. That's why the Michigan Humane Society is sending their help. Today, they will be deploying a team of nine field services and shelter experts trained in emergency response. The team will be split up into two groups, one for rescue and recovery in the disaster zone and one to support the sheltering efforts. With people left with so little after Harvey, the Michigan Humane Society is hoping to bring some relief to those families. Pets are an important part of people's families and right now, you know, people have lost a lot. And so if we can get people's pets back into their uh, hands and into their homes, we want to do that. Obviously, if you have a pet, you know that a pet is part of your family and what these people have gone through would just be devastating for them to lose their pet on top of that. So the efforts from the Michigan Humane Society will definitely be appreciated. Now, Everett and Jason, Everett and Jason, just to give you some perspective here in the storm Katrina, over 600,000 pets were either killed or lost, and that number is expected to be higher for Harvey. I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. Wow, Back that is so incredibly sad. You know that pets, as she mentioned, part of the family for a lot of people. So uh, thankfully, Michigan Humane Society is stepping up to help. Yep. Olympia Entertainment is standing by its decision to have Kid Rock perform six inaugural concerts at Little Caesars Arena, despite backlash. Yeah, the company issued a statement saying in part, Kid Rock has been a consistent supporter of Detroit. Olympia also said that the views of performers are not endorsements by Olympia Entertainment. The controversy erupted after a group announced they are protesting the September 12th show due to Kid Rock's use of the Confederate flag. And the protesters still plan on holding their demonstration is scheduled for 630 the night of the concert. Now, oddly enough, that's only one of two different stories connected to Kid Rock from over the weekend. The musician has not yet said if he's going to really run for U.S. Senate, but he, he's toying with the idea and is now the subject of a federal election complaint by a political watchdog group. Rock responded, reiterating that he has not announced his candidacy. And this morning, some Metro Detroiters tell us their thoughts on a Kid Rock Senate run.
I just don't believe in what he believes in. I would be really interested to see if he brings something fresh to the table. Local political experts believe he is not going to run as so far he has pretty much zero campaign infrastructure. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. It is 537 and if you are planning on hitting the road this morning for Labor Day to travel for the holiday, you might find an unwelcome surprise at the pump. Well, you won't be really surprised. According to AAA, the current average price at the pump across the state is 263. 15 cents more than last week's average. So if you happen to be driving out of state, you might want to fill up actually in Ohio. Their average price this morning is 254. Michigan State Police preparing for a monster traffic jam this morning up north. The Mackinac, the Mighty Mac, will close to traffic from 630 until noon for the annual bridge walk. Drivers can expect heavy delays on northbound 75 north of Gaylord. Well, it was a busy Labor Day weekend all across Metro Detroit with a lot of different events going on at the same time. Just to name a few, you've got the Michigan State Fair. I took my daughter there on Friday for four hours. Wow. Yeah. Jazz Fest in downtown Detroit and, of course, the Renaissance Fair. And today is the last day of Arts, Beats and Eats in Royal Oak. If you didn't get a chance to go this weekend, uh, you missed a lot of fun, but there is still a chance to go today. We've teamed up with Arts, Beats and Eats and the American Red Cross to provide an easy way for you to help Harvey victims. Today, when you buy a wristband at the festival, you can also support uh, the relief efforts by donating money. Just into the newsroom, Royal Baby News. We've learned Britain's Duke and Duchess of Cambridge say they are expecting their third child. Prince William, Princess Kate already have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. No word on when they are due, but I'm sure that they will be taking bets over there. Good for them. All right, so most schools have just started their school year or are going to come Tuesday tomorrow. But one Utah high school's new policy is coming under fire. What students are being forced to do if they're late for class. Very interesting. And more than 2 million people affected by Harvey and hundreds of thousands of people left without homes. What you can do to make sure that your home has the best chance of withstanding a flood when we come back. At Tim Hort. All right, welcome back, everybody. It is 543 on your Labor Day Monday, and you had mentioned moving up your Labor Day barbecue plans. How about we move ours up to about 630, let's say, 640 a.m. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We nice. barbecuing a little early. <laughs> we'll have some barbecue tips, ideas, things like that for you in our next hour, but it's the p.m. six hour that we're trying to get people to steer clear of for the potential of storms. So Ooh. it's a holiday. Way we're, to go, Brandon. Just know, guys, that we are going to have a mostly great holiday, and we just have to avoid some showers and storms late in the day. So here's a beautiful look. Our local four storm pinner, Jennifer Litomiski. The Tom Lido. Uh, anyway, it's like the Sunshine Awards. I will steer clear. Uh, but Jennifer is up in Port Huron. Beautiful shot. The beautiful day on the Huron Lady 2. The American flag beautifully displayed just in time for Labor Day. Jennifer, thank you for a great looking shot there as we celebrate this holiday. 58 degrees right now. Pretty average for what we're seeing out there. Middle 50s to low 60s all over Metro Detroit. Southwest winds are eight. Those winds will be picking up late morning into the afternoon. 62 at 8 a.m., 79 degrees at noontime today, and 85 degrees your afternoon high. We'll start to see some clouds billowing up with the heat of the afternoon, and also those winds 10 to 25 miles an hour non storm related, just a breeze that's blowing in the warmer air throughout the day on your Labor Day and four o'clock. We're seeing storms nearby, but it's five to 10 p.m. Eyes to the skies late, late afternoon and through the evening hours. This is a little dicey and I know we still have arts, beats and eats uh, music 
late tonight. So again, we'll be watching this closely. May have to dodge a little bit of this through the evening hours, but we want you to get out and enjoy what will be a mostly spectacular and warm summer like day. Storm Prediction Center from Norman, Oklahoma. The professionals there have placed southeastern lower southern Ontario under a slight risk. A decent handful of storms likely to pop during that 5 to 10 p.m. hour that uh, could produce some damaging wind, hail, certainly lightning and heavy downpours, and even an isolated threat uh, for tornadoes from the National Weather Service discussion uh, this morning. We have a, a little warm front and then that cold front and it's the warm winds coming in ahead of this cold front that will be the recipe for those showers and storms. We mentioned some of the risks, but it is a good moderate risk for seeing storms producing 60 plus mile an hour winds, downbursting, gusting winds, straight line wind type potential, which is just as bad as a, a weak tornado. But that tornado threat is very low. It is still mentioned in something we don't want to rule out, especially down near the Ohio and Indiana borders, maybe the greatest risk for that along and south of our borders late today. Here is the computer model and again, watch the timeline 4 p.m. Everything is still just to the north of us moving through the area. 5, 6 p.m. starting to see those showers and storms with this linear formation. Not that it's going to move super fast through, but probably a 60 to 90 minute delay in your plans with these showers and storms that can wreak some havoc quickly. Tomorrow the cooler air comes in. I know the kids are heading back to school. We'll have some afternoon light spotty showers on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday only in the 60s again with cool air and these west northwest winds trying to bring some lake enhanced spritzes and sprinkles on Friday, Saturday, Sunday though guys, we start to see improvements, temperature and sky conditions toward the end of the week. How's it looking on the drive on a holiday? Well, first of all, we have a water main break in Lincoln Park. This is northbound Fort Street past Emmons Boulevard. Only the left lane is open there. Meantime, southbound 275 accident has a ramp closed to northbound 75. Your detour there, we suggest you exit at Telegraph and take that to Newport Road and then to northbound 75. And then that semi-accident at Nine Mile that we are looking at right there on that uh, shot uh, has the left lane blocked in both directions. Boy, oh boy, a lot of messes out there this morning. We'll let you know when they clear. It is 547. Let's get to some stories that you might have missed, starting with this one. Uh, you have to be on time or pay the fine. Hallways at a school in Utah are a lot emptier this school year after a new policy requiring students to pay a fine when they're late. The first offense is a warning. The second offense is a $3 fine, and any offense after that is 5 bucks. Student can't pay the fees. They can opt for lunch detention or show a clean, tardy record. The money from the fines will go into a fund that goes towards student incentives. What do you think about this? As long as there's a trade off that they, they're not forced to pay, I'm okay with it. Because they have an option. Yeah. You know, I think in life, you know, if you don't show up late to work or if you show up late to work, chances are you can get fired. So, in a way, you kind of lose money too, have to pay a fine. So, I, I, I have no problem with it. Yep. If you're feeling hungry and want to grab some fast food, it might become as easy as just saying cheese. Yeah, new this month, customers at KFC down in China can now pay for their food with their face. Let that sink in. Select Chinese locations of the restaurant will employ a facial recognition software that enables something called Smile Pay. Diners pay by scanning their faces at an ordering kiosk and entering a phone number. This is the first commercial use of the technology anywhere in the world. I'd like to know how it works, you know? I guess if it works in China, then they might branch out and spread it to other places. We'll see. <laughs> Here at home now, Metro Detroiters came together to support those affected by Harvey. You contributed thousands of supplies to this cause. On the left, Metro Detroit uh, helped pack a vintage World War II plane with thousands of supplies for Harvey victims. It happened during the Thunder Over Michigan Air Show at Willow Run Airport in Ypsilanti. 
plane's pilot says he's taking the items to areas that haven't been reached because of floodwaters. And on the right side of your screen, Detroiters worked hard to stuff a semi for Hurricane Harvey victims. This happened at Rajal Golf Course here in Detroit. This was the second semi filled with supplies by a group over the weekend. In Madison, Wisconsin, two dozen companies have band together to stuff a truck with cheese and butter for Houston. So far, the group has gathered more than 17,000 pounds of cheese and around 300 pounds of butter. All of the donations are said to be headed to the city's food bank. And the truck is expected to arrive in Houston by Thursday. Now we just need somebody to deliver them some bread and they can make some grilled cheese. Some brats, good to go. Yeah, from Wisconsin. It is 5.50, everybody, and we get a lot of rain here in Michigan. We already know that, and occasionally we'll get some flooding. Coming up, we'll tell you how to make sure you keep flood water on the outside of your house. See what's happening on the next Live in the D. Great ways to enjoy your Labor Day holiday. Outdoors and indoors, it's fun for the whole family. Today at 10 on Local 4. Drug addicts are... Tigers game this afternoon and grab the sunscreen. It is going to be warm and breezy. Southwest winds today 10 to as much as 25 miles an hour. Game starts at 1 and temperatures are going to get into the middle 80s. But after 4 p.m., we're saying 5 to 10 p.m., guys, we're seeing showers and storms, some of which could be strong to severe. Keep an eye to the skies. And we are keeping our eye on our m -Dot camera here in this accident on the northbound side of I-75 right at 9 mile. Uh, because of this, we've got the two left lanes blocked now. Uh, we will let you know once it clears. It is 554 everybody and as homeowners in Houston start returning to their homes, homeowners everywhere else are facing increasingly wet weather and might be wondering what they can do to protect their properties. Here in Michigan, we've grown accustomed to more than our fair share of rains, so the devastating flood in Houston could be the ultimate wake-up call to make sure your home is waterproof. NBC's Diana Olick has more. There is no way to keep a home dry in five feet of rain, period. But storms today are increasingly strong and wet, and even a brief storm can cause water damage. Some homeowners may not even know they have a problem. We try to tell homeowners it's the water you can't see that causes the most damage. Uh, when your basement leaks, it does, doesn't decide to leak one day. There's a lot of early warning signs, such as just dampness in the basement or a musty odor, um, cracks on the walls or floor, uh, more, again, some kind of discoloration on the walls, white powder on the walls. Bryant recommends all homeowners take every precaution. Make sure your sump pump is operating. Install a battery backup or generator for the sump pumps. Have wide trenches or French drains dug in the basement that run into the sump pumps. Look for those early warning signs of leakage. Make sure all gutters are clear and running well away from the home. And if you don't have a basement, make sure the land around your home is well graded away from the slab foundation. As for cost, it can run anywhere from $2,000 for just a sump pump up to $30,000 for foundation repairs, battery backups, and digging trenches and drains. Bryant said his business has jumped 50% in the last five years due to heavier rainfalls and more consumer concern about what a damp house does to air quality. He also points to new construction. It's the newer homes, I would say, post-1980 that leak faster. The reason why is just they were built quicker. So now how do you choose a waterproofing company? Well, you should look around for one that's been around for a while doing business. Many of them offer long term warranties, so you want to make sure the company is actually still around if the water happens to come in again. Rapper Lil Wayne is recovering after being hospitalized over the weekend in Chicago. The 34 year old is said to have been hospitalized after being found unresponsive in his hotel room. Those close to Wayne say the rapper is epileptic and according to doctors has suffered a seizure, which we've heard him uh, has happened to him in the past when he was supposed to perform in Las Vegas on Sunday, but doctors advised against it. There's no word on whether Wayne will be canceling the rest of his current tour, but we do wish Wheezy well. 
All right, everybody, you know what that sound means. It's time to talk Film Challenge Detroit. As you've got less than a month to enter and win the third annual Local 4 Film Challenge. We want to send one lucky filmmaker to the Sundance Film Festival with $1,000 cash in your pocket. Head to FilmChallengeDetroit.com to upload your 5 to 15 minute video or film fitting the theme Good versus Evil before September 22nd. That's your deadline. Uh, good luck. We get a lot of good ones. It is 5.58, everybody. Coming up all new at 6 o'clock, local stories for you from across Metro Detroit, including Westland and the city of Detroit itself. Also, the man who claims cough medicine may have caused him to kill his wife. And the dramatic moment an out-of-control SUV came crashing into this laundromat. Local 4 News at 6 a.m. coming up next. Oof. The boats are in. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. Doc, a decision more than 700,000 so-called dreamers may soon face the nightmare of possible deportation. Plus the fight for 15. Hundreds are spending the Labor Day holiday working for better wages. Taking a look at the flag out here, it is blowing. The winds coming up from the south are bringing in some warmer air, but that's all ahead of a cold front. Showers and storms later could be strong. You know, he could have just told us about the good part of the forecast and let the evening meteorologist handle all the bad news. That's our Brandon Roof for you. Welcome to Monday, everybody. It is Labor Day. A lot of people getting ready for their barbecue. I'm Evrod Kasami. Speaking of barbecue, I'm Jason Carr, and we will be outside <laughs> on the patio before this hour is over. I'm trying to understand how speaking of barbecue and Jason Carr have to go hand in hand, but yeah, I guess we'll find absolutely out. Absolutely do, Brandon. We'll, go, <laughs> we'll find out a little bit later, won't we? Yeah, we know it. Uh, watching live in the D and even here on the morning show. Jason knows a good barbecue, and we're asking you to perhaps move up your barbecue plans if you're thinking 5, 6 p.m. We're advising maybe 3.30 to 5 p.m. in that window as things get a little dicey after 5 p.m. today. But right now, looking live at Mount Clemens, we're in good shape. 58 degrees southwest winds are 9. We've got the last day of Ford Arts Beats and Eats on your Labor Day today, and it's very summer-like. Drink lots of water. Water. Dew points are up. The humidity is up a little bit. The winds are going to be kicking southwest 10 to as much as 25 miles an hour, bringing us to 85 this afternoon. Maybe see an isolated shower or storm at 4 o'clock, but most of the activity will still be north and west of us. So between 5 and 10 p.m., showers and storms could be producing damaging wind and hail. We'll talk more about that coming up, but the Storm Prediction Center has us under a slight risk for severe weather through the late, late afternoon and evening hours. Guys, we'll talk more about it again in about 10 minutes. Right now, we want to get a check of the Labor Day commute, which has not been great. Well, it has not been great because we've had a number of accidents this morning, two of them and a water main break uh, that happened. We'll tell you about uh, this, these two accidents. The first one on the southbound side of I 275. That accident has the ramp closed to northbound 75. If you like a detour, just exit a Telegraph Road and take that to Newport Road, which then you can get back onto northbound I-75 from there. And then let's take a look at our MDOT camera. We've been showing you this video of this accident all morning long. It's at I-75. Uh, the accident here However, if you've noticed anything different, the accident has cleared. The first responders have left the scene, so that is some good news there. We'll let you know if any other accidents pop up throughout the morning. Developing news out of North Korea. Leaders there carried out their most pow powerful nuclear test to date. The country is claiming they've developed a hydrogen bomb that could sit on top of an intercontinental ballistic missile. In response to the test in North Korea, South Korea has sent a strong message to the North with a series of live fire drills. Japan and South Korea held a 20 minute phone call this morning to discuss this situation and the UN Security Council is set to meet in New York today at 10 a.m. to discuss tougher sanctions against North Korea. President Donald Trump also dealing with another explosive issue. Word is that he'll end the program aimed to protect young immigrants. The Obama era program called Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA for short, gave work permits to undocumented immigrants who arrived to the U.S. when they were children. The White House plans to delay the enforcement for six months. If the delay ends, the enforcement could affect hundreds of thousands of immigrants. A formal announcement will come sometime tomorrow.
Now a local 4 News update. A suspect who escaped while handcuffed is now back in police custody. Police pulled over Artes Davis for speeding Saturday in the area of Joy Road and Vaughn. He was arrested for a probation violation. Officers cuffed him, but as they were putting him in the back of the squad car, he broke free and ran across Joy Road. He was, though, later found about 10 o'clock last night. Happening this Labor Day, working for better wages. A local group is fighting for $15 an hour in minimum wage and getting some help from all across the country, in fact. Local force Kim DeGiulio is live in Detroit where another protest is taking place. It sounds pretty noisy there, Kim. Oh yeah, this actually just started. They did start the protesting last night and they did say that they were gonna be here at six o'clock in the morning and sure enough, six o'clock on the dot, all of these people came. You can see that they're chanting, what do we want, $15, when do we want it now? And there's people here from all different ages, children, teenagers, adults, all fighting to make more money and raise minimum wage. Local cooks and cashiers from McDonald's walked off the job yesterday at a McDonald's here in Detroit to fight for union rights and a higher wage, demanding $15 per hour. In more than 300 cities across America, employees from McDonald's, Burger King, and other restaurants are conducting these protests. The strike started last night and will continue today. The strike comes just ahead of the 2018 election, which will aim to encourage people to elect leaders who will support a $15 an hour minimum wage and union rights. Some people came as far as New York to support the cause. I feel like since New York was able to get their minimum wage raise to $15 because we stood together as one union, as one voice, and when there's unity, there is power. And the people of Detroit need to stand together. If they want this $15 minimum wage to go up, stand together. Don't stop. The fight may be hard, but keep going because at the end of the road, they'll get what they want if they stand together. Right now, the minimum wage in Michigan is $8.90. Now, right now, we're located at the McDonald's in Detroit on West Grand Boulevard. Last night, the protest took place at the McDonald's on Wyoming. I just spoke to one of the protesters, and they said they plan to be here for about an hour or so and then head on over to Henry Ford Hospital to continue their protest. So we will continue to stay here and monitor these protests and keep you updated on this right here on Local 4. Reporting live here in Detroit, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. Seems like it's picking up steam out there, Kim. We'll definitely be checking back in with you throughout the morning. It is 6.06 now and Detroit police are currently searching for three missing teens. Take a look. One is 14 year old Kavan Quilter. His family reported him missing on Thursday from his home near Elmers and Linwood. He's described as five foot three, weighs about 115 pounds with brown eyes. And then look at the photo of this 18 year old by the name of Terrell Kenyon Jr. He was last seen by his father Saturday at their home on Westbrook Street. Police saying that he left after an argument with his father. He does suffer from a mental condition, mental health condition, so he does need medication. Please contact police if you have seen either of them. They're also trying to locate 17 year old Angelique Peterson, who was last seen at her father's home in Evergreen near McNichols on Friday. Investigators telling us that her mother says Angelique had an argument with her father and then left as well. She's described as six feet tall, weighs about 220 pounds with hazel eyes. She's said to be in good physical and mental condition. Breaking news out of London, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have announced they are expecting a third child. The royal couple made the announcement via Twitter just moments ago. In the release from Kensington Palace, it says the Queen is delighted with the news. It goes on to say Duchess Kate is suffering from severe morning sickness, as she has with her previous two pregnancies. We'll keep you updated on this story on air and on clickondetroit.com. All right, well, we are learning this morning about a new type of identity theft that many never think about until it's too late. Yeah, and they just can't catch a break. New evacuation orders issued in Texas. Now this. Good Monday morning. I think it's a good time to start talking more about specific kinds of identity theft. And the first one I want to hit is 
tax identity theft. So usually if that happens to you, you're likely to get a letter from the IRS either saying that someone used your social security number to file taxes in your name or an employer you don't know paid you. So here's what you do in that instance. You complete IRS form 14039. Now that's an ID theft affidavit. You're going to mail or fax that form, including all forms of proper ID. Actually, you only need one, but a license, a driver's license, passport, social security card, but you have to prove you are who you are to the IRS. Then you're going to contact that employer to explain that you have been a victim of ID theft and you want to save records of everything, all the letters you send, all the contacts you make with the IRS, even write down who it was that you talked to. Now, you're going to place fraud alerts with all three of the credit bureaus, and if you need special help, there's a number you can call at the IRS. It's 888-908-449. So all of this information is easily found on the Maloney Money page at clickondetroit.com. And if you have any questions, email me at rodm at wdiv.com. Welcome back, everyone. It is 612, and now we want to get you updated on the latest in the Harvey aftermath as cleanup efforts are expected to continue on this Labor Day. Right now, we know that at least 53 people have died as a result of Harvey, and sadly, that number is expected to rise. Officials are also ordering now those who choose to stay behind in their flooded homes to evacuate. All of this, as Mexico has said, it will send relief supplies to the flood ravaged area sometime this week. City officials also say their top priorities continues to be finding housing for those who are going to be without a home for some time to come. And here at home, Metro Detroiters are doing what they can to help the Harvey victims by packing a vintage World War II plane with thousands of supplies. And as you can see, the turnout was strong. It happened during the Thunder Over Michigan Air Show, which happens every year in Ypsilanti. And Detroit just worked to stuff a semi. This was the second semi loaded full of supplies. It happened at Rogale Golf Course here in Detroit. That semi now headed to Houston. Very, very cool. Uh, it's good to see everybody getting together, yeah. not just uh, with the plane, which is awesome enough, but at the at the golf course, Rogale Golf Course. You know, I would be happier in Houston if I were designated to get the plane stuff. I mean, Why is that? That's going to get there quicker. Get my stuff quicker. Hopefully they don't have the problems they've had in past storms getting the stuff distributed. Yes. Allegedly certain relief efforts driving around with empty trucks as a PR stunt. So. Mm. Well, meanwhile, if you are planning on donating and you can head on over to Rogale Golf Course, would today be a good day to play? Have you ever played there? Uh, I have not, and I would absolutely love to. You know, we, a little bit of a breeze today, but very warm and very uh, windy at times as well. It's late in the day that we're concerned about showers and storms. Let's start with your four zone temperatures out there right now. 58 at Metro Airport at our Metro Zone, 52 in Ann Arbor in our West Zone, Pontiac at 61. Our North Zone is warmer than anywhere else and 56 right now over in Adrian in our South Zone. Boating a little bit of an issue today. We're just getting the warning out here. Make sure we've got plenty of life vests and everybody has them on two to three foot chop over on Lake Huron, one to two foot waves on Lake St. Clair and two to three foot waves on Lake Erie. The southwest winds 10 to 20 knots out there on the lakes. Even the smaller lakes here uh, inland will be a bit on the bumpy side, so just want everybody to be careful. Plenty of sun early, 62 at 8 a.m., 79 degrees at noon and a high of 85. Ford Arts Beats and Eats last day on this Labor Day, and it again looks very nice. We're drinking plenty of water during the daytime today and plenty of sunscreen. Also a warning about this evening barbecue plans instead of maybe 6 p.m. Let's make it 4 p.m. Just trying to avoid these showers and storms. The Storm Prediction Center has us under a slight risk for severe weather. Parts of Lenaway County there under an enhanced risk. So between 5 and 10 p.m. Eyes to the sky strong to severe weather as this warm and windy air coming up from the south will meet a cold front already producing rain 
and thunderstorms across northern lower and parts of the UP. Highest threat for lightning and some heavy downpours. Also winds that could be 60 miles an hour or stronger from these storm cells. And that uh, is just as bad as a weak tornado. Tornado threat is very, very low, but we can't ignore it. So we'll have to just keep a very close eye on these strong to severe storms 5 to 10 p.m. today. Most of the day in good shape. Tomorrow we're back to school and we should be dry at the bus stops in the morning, upper 50s to low 60s, but only 72 tomorrow, Evrod, and we have uh, some spotty showers in the afternoon. Afternoon. Here's your Hanson's weather window from the Penobscot building and Belle Isle, a beautiful place to spend part of your Labor Day today walking around. They've got, of course, the beach there as well. Plenty to do and a great place to be. Maybe even a little bit cooler feeling those breezes coming off the river on Belle Isle, our Hanson's weather window this morning. Some issues on the road. Let's check with Evrod. You're supposed to say a nice cool breeze breeze. Well, people are people are expecting that Brandon. soon enough. We're getting into cool <laughs> breeze season. There it is. All right, let's talk about uh, some accidents that it might affect your morning drive. The one on two on 75 is, has cleared, but this one on the southbound side of 275 still will affect your morning drive. It has the ramp to northbound 75 closed to get around all this. You can exit a telegraph and then take that to Newport Road and then back to I 75 and then there's a water main break in Lincoln Park that's affecting traffic. Only the left lane is open there right near northbound Fort Street past Emmons Boulevard. Again, this is a water main break in Lincoln Park. Uh, we'll let you know once that has been fixed and the other accident has cleared. Now let's send it out to Jason on this Labor Day where we're talking grilling and some good old barbecue. Yeah, I'm really and from the weather patio, as we look at this video, oh, oh man, I'm so hungry. Lots of folks grilling on this unofficial last day of summer. A new study finds 86% will cook out for Labor Day. Among them, 72% will cook out on a back deck or patio. At least 1% will cook out on a TV station patio. <laughs> and 33% on the grass and 12% on the driveway. Executive chef. Brandon Clark is here from JB Smokehouse inside Bush's Market on Canton Center Road in Canton. Good morning to you, sir. Pleasure to be here. Well, it's our pleasure because you're going to take care of us, uh, including all this uh, seasoned meat that we have here on the table in front of us. But uh, this time around, we're talking about cheesy potatoes and vegetables. Yeah, so I'm calling it a campfire potato gratin. And as you see, I started this when I got here this morning. All right, right, let's uh, let me spin around here so the camera can get a shot of this. So we've got some Cabot cheddar cheese, some Michigan potatoes, and a little bit of cream, and I'm just roasting it uh, off a direct flame of the grill. All right, so that can go on the grill next to what you have there is uh, vegetables as well. Yeah, I've got our sweet bell peppers and our summer squash, and it's gonna be marinated here with uh, some lemon, garlic, uh, olive oil, and salt and pepper. It's a really nice bright marinade. Now, as, uh, as we look here on the table, what you have here as a spread, is there a certain kind of vegetable that goes with certain kinds of meats, or does it even matter? I mean, you look like shish kebab, you got a little bit of everything going there. Right, I think at this point, you know, with the summer bounty and harvest coming in, you know, whatever you have available in your garden or at your local farmer's market would be great. And I see also that you have uh, different condiments and sauces uh, lined up here. When you go to JB's, I'm sure that there will be a professional, if not yourself, somebody else that would happily tell the at-home griller this is what you need for this this is what you need for that absolutely although all of our five barbecue sauces over there are very versatile with all of the smoked meats that we provide at jb's now you say five different sauces there on the left side of the table what uh, different levels of heat or different kinds of spices yeah or? we've got the red hot chipotle that which is probably our spiciest all the way up to the uh, michigan cherry uh, which is our sweetest and the uh, cuts of meat in the center of the table, I see you got some burgers there for the crew and also, what, uh, is that sirloin? Uh, yeah, it is. It's sirloin and I've dusted them uh, since we're in Detroit this morning. I went with Mexican Town and Greek Town seasoning. And in terms of having a full complement of everything you need for your back backyard grilling, uh, really JB Smokehouse is the place, right? Absolutely. Come and see us. We're definitely open today and happy to serve you. And we're happy to be served at 640 with a second segment. So for now, we're going to shut it down out here and get to cooking on some of this meat. We'll send it back into Studio A. 
All right, I can't wait to get our hands on those cheesy potatoes. Uh, Jason, thank you. It is 620, everybody. Let's get into today's consumer headlines. Mechanics advise that as summer comes to an end, it's a good time to have the tread checked on your tires and get ready for the upcoming winter. Proper tread, get, proper tread depth gives your car traction to stop and hold the road on curves. All you need to check is your uh, to check your tread depth is a penny. Stick the penny in the tread and make sure that it goes over Lincoln's head. If it doesn't, it's probably time to head on over to your service center and get some new tires, which will set you back a few bucks. Quite a few bucks, in fact. Also, TV commercials, not much longer than this sentence, are coming to an NFL game near you. Six second ads are set to debut during the NFL regular season on Fox's NFL coverage. Fox hopes that the ads will set a new standard that will play alongside the more traditional 15 and 30 second commercials. All right, it is 621, everybody, and it's back to school, back to work for most people. Who has time to prepare and cook dinner these days, right? Well, I had this morning the service and services, I should say, that do all this for you. It's convenience in a box. And before you go to break, we want to introduce you to today's Facebook friend for the day. This is Brandy Jones from Milford. She's a mother of two who loves to cook and bake. We're actually going to send you, Brandy, a pair of tickets to the Michigan Renaissance Festival just for being our friend of the day. We know all your friends are going to be jealous of you. And if you'd like to be our friend of the day and win big with those Michigan uh, Renaissance Festival tickets, make sure you like the Local 4 Facebook page, click on the Friend of the Day tab, and you could win big. We'll be right back. 58 degrees uh, outside right now, but we do have, uh, there we go, uh, 58 at Metro, 61 in Pontiac. And again, boating concerns today with a little bit of a chop, but other than that, we're looking pretty good until about 4 or 5 p.m. We should hit 85 with sun early storms between 5 and 10 p.m. And would you look at that? Remember when we were telling you about this uh, accident at 275 and I-75? Well, the ramp there that was closed because of it has since reopened. So we're looking all good, minus the whole water main break situation in Lincoln Park. But we'll keep our eyes on that for you and let you know when that situation is under control. Now here's Brandon with sports. Oh, an active weekend in college football and the college football nation waking up shocked after Howard University the Bisons upset the running Rebs, the Las Vegas Rebels. This was 43 to 40. Winner, winner, Howard in Las Vegas. Howard came into the game as a 45 point underdog, and that point spread makes this the biggest upset ever, ironically, in Las Vegas, where this happened. Among the stars for Howard, Kalen Newton. The name sounds familiar. It's because he's the younger brother to Carolina Panthers QB Cam Newton. Guys, Liberty also beats Baylor. Ah, all righty. Brandon, thank you. Baylor, wow. It is 627, everybody. Coming up next at 630, local stories for you from Westland and Detroit. Plus, defending Kid Rock. See who's taking his side, even in the face of protest. And children getting paid to go out and play. You'll meet the dad who says it's money well spent. And today's top video, a new world record in a very unique, unique type of drinking game. <laughs> That's coming up next. Navigate your... Let's get those. Let's teach me that. Get out of here. Are you serious? Today's top video takes us to Germany, where a new record has been set for carrying mugs of beer. Oh, I'm just waiting for him to spill this. This uh, The challenge for Oliver Strunkfell was to carry at least 27 <laughs> full mugs. Look at his face. <laughs> Over 40 yards with only minimal spilling. Can we see his shirt? But he overachieved. He set the record with 29 mugs, which is more than 150 pounds of beer and glass. Unreal. He spent over 200 hours in the gym training for this world record. Why would he have to spend time at the gym? Why not go to Hopcat? Right there on Woodward. Have the crack fries. We're back in a minute. <laughs> Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6.30 starts now. Tragedy in Westland as a wheelchair-bound woman dies 
in a massive fire. This morning, some are saying the management is to blame. Plus, the husband who says too much cough medicine caused him to kill his wife. And in weather on this holiday, we are tracking a warm one, but a cold front is approaching, and this could put uh, a little bit of a red light to your barbecue plans later. Where's my red light, Roxanne? Didn't happen. Did I miss something there? I don't know. I think he was trying to uh, do some uh, illustration or some telestration, <laughs> and it didn't telestrate. Look at him over here. He's, he's there we go. We'll, we'll turn things right over to, to Brandon to show you what he was intending on doing there. Did you get it figured out? I did, but, you know. Too little, too late, right? If you don't pull it off right in time, then, you know, it's kind of like, what's the point? Uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I practiced this thing, too, during commercial. Uh, there's a look at the radar picture out there and what we have uh, coming your way. Uh, right now, though, temperature is right at about 58 degrees. We have a southwest wind at 9 and 10-mile visibility. So things are looking good right now. Just a couple of clouds out there for the day, though. We've got Tigers game, we've got Arts Beats and Eats, we have the Jazz Festival, we've got your pool parties, everything going on, and we're looking awesome for the first two-thirds of the day uh, through about 4 p.m., 85 degrees. We are watching 10 to 25 mile an hour winds out of the southwest, making for a big chop out there on the lake, so be careful boating. But after 4 p.m., eyes to the skies between 5 and 10 p.m., not only a risk for strong storms, but severe weather chances. These warm winds blowing through an area of low pressure way up to our north. And again, with that, we've got this trailing cold front so as the warm air meets this cold front between 5 and 10 p.m., some of these storms could be producing 60 plus mile an hour winds. Plenty of lightning, also some hail. So we're going to break this down a little bit more for you. Uh, and the evening barbecue plans again may want to get pushed up a little bit. Speaking of the, well, I don't know if we're speaking of it, but we're going to it. The roads this morning. It's Labor Day. Jason, we should be smooth and clear. Yeah, but we've had some issues this morning. Uh, let's take a look at a water main break in Lincoln Park. This is northbound Fort Street past Emmons Boulevard. Only the left lane is open there. So as you make your way, if you're going off to work this morning, make sure it's a safe one. Evrod. Let's go to Westland now where one woman sadly is dead after her Westland apartment complex erupts in flames. Now others say that management at the Willow Creek Apartments has ignored several requests to make the complex handicap accessible. The 68 year old victim Verlene Johnson was blind and confined to a wheelchair and neighbors were hoping that someone would get her out in time. We got a chance to catch up with one of Johnson's neighbors who is also in a wheelchair and was saved by his sister in law. So I, I opened the door and uh, I, I couldn't even see it was it was just so black. I would have never made it out and not somebody helped me out. We reached out to management uh, about the residents concerns, but they refused to comment. Olympia Entertainment is standing by its decision to have Kid Rock perform six inaugural concerts at Little Caesars Arena despite the growing backlash. The company issued a statement saying in part, quote, Kid Rock has been a consistent supporter of Detroit end quote. Olympia also said the views of performers are not endorsements by Olympia Entertainment. Now the controversy erupted after a group announced they are protesting the September 12th show due to Kid Rock's use of the Confederate flag. The protest organizers still plan to hold their demonstration. Well, 17 year old may face charges in connection with the shooting death of his stepfather. Detroit police say the teen shot and killed his stepfather Saturday on the city's west side. The gunfire came during an argument over money at a home on Ward Avenue near McNichols and the Lodge. The teen took off but was found and taken into custody early Sunday. A team of experts from Metro Detroit are going to be leaving today, heading all the way down to Texas. They are part of a special search, rescue, and relief effort, and local forest Kim DeGiulio is live to explain what's going to happen. Kim? 
Good morning, guys. That's right. Well, obviously the storms in Houston has left many people without a place to go, without a home. But just think about all the pets that are in that same situation. And that's what brings us here today to the Michigan Humane Society. As you can see there, they are packing up their trucks, headed down to Texas today to offer their help. These days in Houston, animal shelters are overflowing with dogs and cats. I got you something. Animal control officer Nadine Perez is staying here around the clock to care for frightened pets. This shelter, normally able to care for up to 30 dogs and 60 cats, now has 100 dogs and 100 cats. It's very high stress right now. Um, emotions are high. That's why the Michigan Humane Society is sending their help. Today, they will be deploying a team of nine field services and shelter experts trained in emergency response. The team will be split up into two groups, one for rescue and recovery in the disaster zone and one to support the sheltering efforts. With people left with so little after Harvey, the Michigan Humane Society is hoping to bring some relief to those families. Pets are an important part of people's families and right now, you know, people have lost a lot and so if we can get people's pets back into their uh, hands and into their homes, we want to do that. And to lose a pet after all of what those people have been through would just be devastating. So I want to show you behind me here. We have this vehicle. This is state of the art rescue vehicle. It can hold up to 60 dogs at one time. They're planning on taking this down. And if you take a look behind me here, we do have a trailer that they're packing up in here. This is for the rescue team. They're going to be out in the field. There's generators ready to go meals, uh, tents, sleeping bags, you name it. They are ready to go off for their efforts and I know their efforts will definitely be appreciated down in Houston. Reporting here at the Michigan Humane Society, I am Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. Back to you. Yeah, we appreciate the work that they're doing. I know everyone in Houston will be thankful as well. Frightening moments at a laundromat when a driver makes a clean break right through the front door. Uh, what's even more amazing is that he was going backwards the whole time. Details on that coming up. All right, let's try it. Wow. I'm a good cook. I am. Well, let we'll someone else be the judge of that. Just ahead, Everod <laughs> finds out if those convenience box food deliveries are worth your time and money. Plus, it is Friday football frenzy time, our favorite time of the year. Our producers love all of the votes that come in for this. And right now, we want to know who you think has the best high school marching band and drum corps in Metro Detroit. You can nominate your favorite until September 12th, and then voting gets underway. You can head on over to clickondetroit.com and click on the For Frenzy link. It's right there under the Sports tab if you want some more information. We're back in a minute. For Fre in North Carolina, a newlywed man is in custody after he told 911 that he woke up from a dream to find his wife stabbed. Police in Raleigh responded to Matthew and Lauren Phelps' house early Friday after they received that 911 call. 29-year-old Lauren Phelps died at the hospital. Her husband, 28-year-old Matthew Phelps, has been charged with murder. Phelps said he believed that he took too much cough syrup. Well, you only have 24 hours in a day, and those 24 hours can go by very quickly when you take away time for sleep, time for work. It seems like there's not enough hours in the day to get everything done, right? You can cross grocery shopping off of your to-do list now with these fun and easy food options. Two food delivery services with two totally different ways to enjoy a nice and healthy meal. I think this one looks pretty good, but so does this one. Local company Clean Plates offers high quality and healthy foods fully prepared, delivered straight to your door. With options like the orange chicken bowl with brown rice and veggies, tangerine beef and jasmine rice and veggies, and the chicken taco bowl with brown rice, and even breakfast options, there's a lot to choose from. You can eat them fresh or refrigerate them and microwave them for later. I would definitely recommend this. It's tasty, it tastes really fresh like somebody made it this morning. And for those who love to cook but don't have the time to go grocery shopping, there's Blue Apron. The national company delivers fresh ingredients and recipes you select in this box to prepare and cook at home. It's so easy, even I can do it. Today, I tried my hands at making chicken ramen with greens. Put that in there. A little salt, just like so. So it says, while that burns, 
wash and dry the fresh produce. Each recipe tells you step by step what to do next, from slicing the tomatoes and other vegetables to boiling the ramen noodles and the prepackaged seasoning and sauces to add in. And in about 25 to 35 minutes, if you follow the recipe, you'll have a fresh home cooked meal. Here's what the finished dish should look like. And here's my dish. Not bad. All right, let's try it. Wow. I'm a good cook. <laughs> no, I seriously am because here's the thing. So after I made it, my photographer and I, Jim McArdle, sat down and ate it, and he will co-sign on it that, right. that it was good. Awesome. Okay? I didn't burn it. It didn't stick to the pan. He did have to help me figure out how to turn the oven on, but that's only because it's a new oven. Uh, we, do, <laughs> we do want to talk about cost. Blue Apron ranges in price from about $60 for a two-person plan of three recipes a week, and it can go up to about $140 for a family plan with four recipes a week. Mm -hmm. Clean plates, their prices vary starting at $10, but then you can get two meals a day delivered fully prepared for one week at about $150. And you have to remember that while the prices might seem a little bit up there, you're replacing the grocery shopping that you would normally have to do. Right. So you can do less grocery shopping yep. and then have these meals either fully prepared or prepare them at home with the ingredients shipped right to your door. I have a good friend who does these all really? the time. Yeah, out in New York City and mm -hmm. he just gets these things uh, usually as gifts like around his birthday or yeah. Christmas or whatever, but it's he loves it. Never yeah. heard him say a bad thing about it. So. I highly recommend and if you're like me and don't know how to cook, <laughs> well, you become at least good at following directions, right? And, and, and finding uh, out what ingredients are that you've never heard of. Right. <laughs> what is? And and experimenting a little bit. And Evrod is a uh, growing family that you have. You're doing a lot more cooking. And I've heard you repeatedly talk about dishes that you've made that have surprised yourself. So you're, we're all getting better as cooks and chefs, right? Our local four storm pins. This is a free app under WDIV. We want everybody to get this uh, and, and certainly not promoting severe weather tonight, but we're letting you know there is a very good chance of severe weather later tonight. And storm pins is a good way social media wise to let everybody know what could be coming your way with pictures and video, that kind of thing. Uh, it's a free app under WDIV. This one though from RS McGuire at uh, is up in Rochester Hills, a beautiful sunrise. You got that right. Sunrise's official, look at this, freighter crisscross on the Detroit River. That's a little wave activity for anybody out there trying to catch a couple of walleye this morning. But uh, we do have uh, some decent conditions to start the day. And I would say the first two thirds of your Labor Day looking really good. And then the storms later on 58 at Metro Airport, 62 in Howell and Lapeer Monroe at 60. We have 79 degrees at noon, still warm and breezy. Three, four o'clock, we may get an isolated rain or thunder shower coming in from the west and the north, but otherwise 85 and breezy 10 to 25 mile an hour winds coming up from the southwest, mainly between 5 and 10 PM. It is eyes to the skies A pretty high threat, of course, for the lightning and heavy downpours, but a decent threat here, moderate medium threat of damaging wind, 60 mile an hour winds or greater from some of these storms. And that's just as bad as a, a weak tornado, which is also in the discussion, especially down near the Indiana and Ohio borders with Michigan. We need to watch out. That's where we have this little enhanced risk. The rest of us under a slight risk for severe weather from the Storm Prediction Center. It is the warm and muggies and the wind meeting up with that cold front again. The right time there between 5 and 10 p.m. So we're moving the barbecues up a little bit, maybe 3, 4 o'clock instead of later in the day. But keep your eyes on radar all day and look Local 4 News will keep you updated. Tomorrow, kids are back to school, Evrod, and it is noticeably cooler, comfortable for the kids, but a couple of spotty showers both Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday afternoons. More than spotty showers over in Lincoln Park. In fact, it is a water main that has caused all the water on the road, a water main break. It's on the northbound side of Ford Street, just past Emmons Boulevard, and only the left lane is open because of this. So, of course, we'll let you know when it reopens. All right, so take a look at this. An SUV plows right into a Staten Island laundromat, and it's all caught on camera. Wait for it. Ooh. Well, there you see the white SUV backing up. Pretty quickly, I'd say, before accelerating through the front of a laundromat. From another angle, you can see the SUV hit a row of washing machines hitting people 
inside of that laundromat and in total six people were hurt, three of them seriously. Police say the crash was an accident and the 74 year old driver has not been charged with a crime, but you only can wonder how can somebody go backwards for that long without hitting the brakes because I didn't see any brake lights there. Time now is 648 and let's turn things back over to to Jason Carr. He's out on the patio cooking up some delicious uh, tofu burgers out there, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> nice try. <laughs> nice try. We got better than that. Uh, Brandon Clark is here from JB Smokehouse inside Bush's Market on Canton Center Road. Good morning again to you. Pleasure still to be here. Uh, executive chef extraordinaire and the reason I say that is because look at this platter of sirloin meat that he prepared just for me all seven of these <laughs> are going home or six or whatever men there are uh, in my car no I'm kidding there are people in the newsroom are about to riot you um, <laughs> you have a new expanded menu coming and that would include a chicken salad sandwich and, and a turkey and some other stuff yeah we've got our smoked chicken salad sandwich here with uh, sun-dried cherries and honey mustard our fiesta turkey burger that we're gonna have guac guacamole, broccoli sprouts, and tomatoes with, and then uh, steaks with a choice of Detroit City Spice Company spice rubs, Excellent. all coming later this month. Can you make up one of those sandwiches right now, the chicken salad sandwich? Sure, absolutely. Right. So, Like so. Lovely brioche bun. Put our nice little smoked chicken and mayonnaise-based salad on there. And there you go. Wow, Ready? just that simple. That's simple. Now, we're hiding something on the grill back here. Why don't you go ahead and uh, open that up and bring it forward so we can see it in the uh, TV lights here. Brandon is going to uh, finish off a plate, or I should say a tin, of uh, au, au gratin potatoes. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I call it campfire gratin potatoes because we cooked them on the grill, so it's going to have maybe a little bit of smoky flavor to it as well. And I'm finishing it with some buttered panko and Parmesan breadcrumbs to give it a nice little crunch at the end. Go right ahead. Nicely done. Now, you know, put that out at the grill later on today or just go to Bush's and you get set up. Absolutely. All right. You're going to be there later today or at least somebody is? Planning on it. Planning on it. <laughs> Bush's Market there in Canton. Thank you so much, Chef. Good to Thank see you. Thanks for me. Now, if you don't mind, we're going to grub. Send it back in. All right, producer, specifically our segment producer, make sure that I get some of those og rotten potatoes. Those look delicious. It is 650 everybody. When we come back, we're talking children getting paid to exercise and your stories to watch for. Keep it here. Scott. Welcome back, everybody. In our stories to watch for today, President Trump is reportedly moving to end DACA, which stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. That's an Obama era policy that grants work permits to undocumented immigrants who arrived in the United States as children. There is a formal announcement expected for some time tomorrow. In Westland, fire investigators are hoping to determine what sparked a fire at an apartment complex that left one woman dead. Residents at the complex said they repeatedly expressed concerns over the building's accessibility. The owners refusing to comment. Right now, local fast food employees are demonstrating as part of a nationwide movement known as Fight for 15, which pushes for a mandatory $15 per hour rate for employees. These are live pictures from West Grand Boulevard in Detroit, where Congresswoman Debbie Dingell is actually speaking in front of this crowd, a very passionate speech. The group is expected to join the Labor Day Parade a little bit later this morning, but there, uh, hopefully, there you can see her right there on the stage. She just arrived to the protest. Up north, holiday traffic may be even more backed up than normal. The Mackinac Bridge closed to traffic at 630 this morning and will not reopen until noon. It's because of the annual bridge walk. Expect heavy delays on I-75 north of Gaylord as a result. The Labor Day Parade kicks off at 9 a.m. in Michigan and Trumbull. Marchers are going to make their way over to Hart Plaza. Brandon, over to you. All right, tale of two different days today starting out great on this Labor Day. Sun just coming up. 58 degrees. It will be uh, becoming breezy, very warm, 80 degrees or so around noon, one o'clock. The Royals and Tigers at Comerica, 110 first pitch. Winds will be southwest, 10 to 25, 85 degrees by the time the game is over. But through the late afternoon and evening, mainly between 5 and 10 p.m., we have this risk for severe weather today. It's a slight risk, and that's a pretty decent shot uh, as we go through the, the day again it's mainly 5 to 10 p.m. keep your eyes to the skies for strong to severe storms later on
And let's take a look at your traffic as we round out the morning. We're dealing with this water main break still in Lincoln Park. It's on the northbound side of Fort Street, just past Am Emmons Boulevard. Only the left lane is open because of that. And finally here this morning in today's talker, a Florida gym teacher says that he has figured out the key to keeping children healthy and fit. Mm. He's 43 year old Morgan Wright, also known as Moose. Moose. He's one of 100 competitors in the national finals for American Ninja Warrior, which airs tonight. In fact, right here on local Four. American Ninja Warrior. He says his 12 year old daughter and nine year old son stay active because he gives them an allowance for physical activity. Usually ends up paying about 50 bucks a week to the kids. There's only one catch. Both kids have to have their chores and homework done before they can earn their money through exercise. I'm not paying my kids to exercise. The gym doesn't pay you to come. You have to pay the gym. You know what I mean? I'm thinking about it. As lazy as my kids are, this could work. <laughs> I got a steak sandwich. That's all I can do. <laughs> He's not going to the gym. That's He's eating. Enjoy right your, your holiday, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Happy Labor Day.